Hi guys, Straight Razor Revolution here. I just wanted to do a little bit of a honing video today. Um, I'm going to be honing, re-honing rather, my Jerry Stark 6.8s, Spanish. It shaves fine, it shaves really good. Um, I just wanted to do a little bit of a video showing a progression that works for me pretty consistently, very consistently actually, uh, a mix of synthetics and naturals. So I'm going to kill the edge on this and I'm going to bring it all the way back. All right. Stone I'm going to be using to set my bevel is the Shafton 1K Professional. <clears throat> and you can use this stone. It's a splash and go. You don't have to use slurry with these Shapton stones at all. You can literally just splash water on it and go from there. Um, try not to get water on the lens of my camera. I like to use my DMT to clean the surface of the stone off really well and prepare it for sharpening. Make sure it's nice and clean and flat. Almost every time I sharpen, I do this. Unless I've only been doing some very light honing. Usually on my lower grit shaftons, I, I do this every time. But the higher is like starting with eight, going from there. You may not have to because you don't really do a whole lot of work on them. So the surface generally will stay flat for a long time. All right. I like to use a little bit of the slurry generated from the DMT on the surface of the stone. I feel like it helps uh, speed up the process some. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to kill the edge on the side of my uh, stone once or twice. Make sure it's nice and dull. And then again on the rim of a glass, just to make sure it's nice and even. I feel like the glass really smooths out the uh, the roughness of the edge once you've used a stone to kill it. Okay, we're ready to start. So, from talking with a couple of different people, apparently the method that I generally use is uh, the Billy T method. So I'm just going to get started, not a whole lot of talking. I'll start with... 30 to 40 half strokes on each side and I'll work down to uh, to you know basically five half strokes on each side and then go with a set of 10 to 15 X's and check well, here we go And you don't have to use a lot of pressure. You do, however, want to listen for a change in the way the blade is acting on the stone. You can feel the change happen. You can hear it. It makes a different sound while it's sharpening. And that was 30. Twenty. Twenty. 
All right, probably should have checked my battery. <laughs> so, we've gone down to uh, from 20 to 10, and we're proceeding from there. At this point, you can really feel on the home that the bevel is set and you're just refining it a little bit at this point. I really am using very, very light pressure now for these last few half strokes. And we'll go to five and then we'll do X's. So I like to use a heel leading uh, technique when I'm doing my half strokes, but I will, as you can see, uh, switch to a toe leading or go straight on just a little bit here and there just because I feel like it really helps to get you know to um, pinpoint the certain areas of the cutting edge that you're that you're trying to uh, sharpen okay so once I get to my X strokes I like to clean my hone off and get all the slurry and and uh, metal particles off of the face of my stone just so that when I'm doing my refinement X's um, the, the stone is nice and smooth because I'm really trying to get that bevel that's now set to be very um, smooth if possible coming off the 1k I want it to be you know I want the scratches to be as shallow and I want the edge to be you know not very toothy so I'm gonna do X's now and I'm gonna do it with one hand because I feel like it's easier to get less pressure that way You don't need to do very pronounced X's. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure my camera angle is that you can see my whole stone. <clears throat> I feel like you could possibly just do straight on push strokes. Heel leading, of course. But I feel like it really helps to isolate the sections of the blade, the cutting edge, if you do a slight X pattern, meaning starting here and ending here. Even just half of the blade going into an X is seemingly adequate blade weight only And if you notice, I don't have a whole lot of water on the face of my stone. These Shaptons don't absorb water like other stones do. They do very, very minute amount will absorb or evaporate. I'm not sure which it's doing. Um, but with these Shaptons, you don't need a river of, of water on top of your stone sloshing all over the place. I, I kind of find it to be counterproductive to have too much water on the face of your stones. I feel like you're washing away a lot of the grit particles that do rise up. All right, and now I'm gonna check my edge, not only with a uh, illuminated loop, but I'm gonna do a couple of other tests to make sure that my bevel is set all the way across. First, I'm gonna look at it with my loop. All the way across the edge on both sides. I just wanna make sure that the scratches are all the way to the edge, from the top of the bevel to the edge and that they look consistent and that there's no major dings or very deep scratches that I have to contend with. The edge does look a bit toothy right now, but not much so. The scratches are all the way from the top of the cutting bevel to the actual cutting edge of the bevel, so that's good. Everything looks really good on that side. Let's check this side. Another thing you want to look for, which doesn't necessarily mean that the edge is 
you know, good or bad, is a consistent bevel width all the way across. And you can see that the bevel, I don't know if you can see on the camera if it's picking it up or not, but the actual bevel, the cutting bevel is pretty consistent all the way across both sides of the blade. Okay, looks really good under the scope. I'm just going to check it with a wet thumbnail real quick to see if it's grabby everywhere. Good, that feels really good. All right, so I'm going to do a couple more X strokes to finish up. Very, very light because the fingernail test I find diminishes the uh, the keenness of the edge when you do the fingernail test, but it only takes a couple of X strokes to bring it right back. Blade weight only, and actually a little bit less weight than that. It's almost like you're just letting it glide across the surface. And that should be good. So now that we're done with our 1K and we know that the bevel is set, <clears throat> this is where a lot of people struggle. They don't, people in general think that there's a, a vast solution. I was just reading on Badger and Blade the other night, last night, matter of fact, that there's a lot of people out there that think that, you know, as a beginner honer, you can go straight from a 1K to, say, a codical or a JNAT and completely erase all the scratches that the 1K has made and make a good, keen, smooth shaving edge. Now, I haven't been honing as long as some guys out there, but I've been honing for a good long while, and I'll, I'll tell you this, I've, I've not found a JNAT or a codical that's able to do that yet. The whole one stone honing uh, idea, or myth I should say, is very, very uh, difficult to achieve, and I feel like there's people out there that mislead others into thinking that anybody can do it with any stone or, or whatever, but it's just not the case. So, you know, for the most part, try to get that out of your mind. Unless you're a, a master honer with the world's best finishing stones and the best Nagura stones in the world and all that stuff, it's probably not going to happen. Alrighty. So now... I'm going to take my blade to a 3K and I'm going to erase the scratches that the 1K has made. This is a Suhiro 3K. It's one of the only stones that I use that are not a Shapton or a natural stone. Because I find that the stone is very, very creamy feeling. It's very um, aggressive. It takes away the 1K scratches fairly fast, very simple, and it works really well in unison with the Shapton stones and the Billy T method that I use. Again, I'm going to clean off the surface of the stone just to make sure that it's good and flat. And there's a little bit of slurry on the surface. I find that the synthetic stones don't load up with metal uh, as fast as they would if you're just doing it with straight up water. So, you know, even though you don't need slurry, sometimes it's a good idea just to have a little bit. Alrighty, and we're ready. This stone does absorb water a little bit. So you have to constantly make sure that the uh, surface of the stone is not drying out. And again, this time I'm not going to go from 40 down to 5 in the next strokes. This time I'm going to start with uh, 30 and less pressure.
when you're doing this type of uh, half stroke honing, you want to make sure that you keep the same pressure and use the same length of a stroke pretty evenly throughout your uh, progression. Otherwise, if you don't do as long of a stroke on every stroke, you're literally getting less mileage out of it and you're contacting the blade on the stone less. All right, that was 20. Ten. We're going to do five. Three. Two, one, and we're going to go to X strokes. This time I'm going to leave the slurry on the stone for a few of the X strokes. Okay. Now we're just going to clean the stone off. Any uh, metal particles that may have embedded into the first surface of the stone come right off with a little bit of water and rubbing. And now we're just going to do some very light clean up X strokes. I'm trying to per perfect my progression and minimize the use of synthetics before I have to get to my natural stones to finish. Um, but the more synthetics that you use in your progression, the easier it will be to finish on a natural. You see how the stone loads up much quicker when you're not using slurry? Right now I'm just feeling for any feedback that will tell me if I'm close to being finished on this stone. You know, is it gliding? Is it undercutting? Has the feeling changed from being that real toothy, scratchy edge on the face of the stone to being very smooth and glidy? Yes. If you can feel that change happen, then you know that your stone has done what you're looking for it to do and your blade is ready to move on to your next stone in the progression. And I think we're there. So I'm just going to do another couple very light passes just to get it again, minimize the 3K scratches as much as possible, take away any toothiness that may have, you know, resulted in the aggressive style of honing that this method is. It is pretty aggressive, but it's very fast and effective and very easy to reproduce, very consistent. Okay, 
and you can see from the face of this home that you know synthetics will load up relatively fast if you if you're honing without slurry on the stone it didn't do that before it didn't load up when it had all that slurry on the face because it traps the um swarth inside of the the water and slurry and doesn't let it accumulate on the surface but this will come off with a little bit of water and some rubbing too and you know you can always resurface it with a nagra stone or either a dmt okay just like we did before we're going to check the the bevel with um the loop and make sure that we've achieved what we're setting out to achieve okay so when i look through this loop i'm seeing a very consistent scratch pattern that's much finer than the 1k was the edge is much smoother and straight and flat there's no chips or dings there's not really any toothiness and my scratch pattern is lined up diagonally all along the edge very consistent very um very much lighter than it was on the 1k in fact this 3k is so good that it actually works a lot like a, a pre-polisher i mean I'm starting to get some of that black reflection that you get from a high polish edge that a lot of stones you don't see until you get to the 8k mark very nice all of my 1k scratches are gone <clears throat> very consistent very smooth and I'm ready to move on to my 8k I use the Shapton 8k professional I find it to be I've used a lot of different 8k's and I find that this 8k is probably the most consistent pre-polish it, it's actually not even a pre-polish this is a polishing stone like it works so fast a lot of people say you only need to do 20 to 30 strokes on an 8k before you're through and you're ready to move on but i find that you know being as aggressive as what it is it's really very difficult to over hone with an 8k with the shaft in 8k anyway it's a very good stone, very consistent, very good feedback. That's another thing that's really good about the Shaftons is you don't need to buy one of those Steel X or Naniwa stone holders. The, the case acts as a stone holder. It has ridges along the top and venting in the bottom that allows it to drain. <clears throat> so I just love my Shafton stones. There's not really i mean i know a lot of people swear by chosera's or the super stones or whatever but i'll tell you what i've been using shaptons for a long time now and you couldn't pay me to switch to another synthetic stone Ready to move on to our 8k just going to apply a little bit of water so it's not very dry slurry because we're not looking to cut super fast we're just looking to refine and again i'm going to start at 30 and work my way down to five half strokes both sides and then do 10 to 20 15 clean up x strokes Right, there's 20 
Now we'll do 10. All right, guys. <clears throat> so now, basically, we're just going to finish with some cleanup strokes here. I've checked the edge. Everything looks really good. And I'm just going to do a few very light passes with the X pattern. Less than blade weight, really. Almost no contact. You're like just hydroplaning across the surface because I just want to diminish any uh, previous 3K ones, you know, 3K scratches or any feathering that may be on the edge. Right after this, we're going to take it to the strop for just about 20 passes. Everything feels really smooth and consistent. I'm not feeling any changes in the feedback. That's what I look for mostly, besides undercutting and all that stuff. I look for a change in the feedback. When you first switch progressions to a new stone, say you go from 6K to 8K, when you first put that blade on that 8K, it's gonna have a certain feel to it. And at some point, you're gonna feel a major shift and the way the feel, the feedback is, you know, the the sense, the vibration that you're getting in your fingers and hands, the way it sounds, the way it's gliding, you know, all that stuff. And then it's not going to change again. It's going to continuously just be the same. When you get to the point where you know your stone and your blade well enough to where you can recognize that change, you're doing all right, you know. We're there now. I haven't noticed a major change, and it's just gliding and undercutting very smoothly very consistently I'd say we're done with the 8k so I'm gonna clean my blade up clean my stone off put it away strop a little bit I'm just gonna spray the, spray the uh, swarth and any slurry that may have accumulated on the surface there and we're moving on to the next stone <clears throat> actually first we're gonna strop for about 20 strops I'm gonna do about I don't know, 10 passes on linen. In this case, it's going to be poly webbing. Very lightly on this stuff. And then about 10 passes on leather. The next thing I'm going to do, I know you probably can't see this on camera, is I'm going to gently drag my blade through the back side of my scrub leather just once to remove any feather edge that may have formed on during the honing. Okay. So, now, what to do now? Since we've finished with the 8K, and I'm going to scope it in just a second here. We're at the point where we can now choose whether or not we want to move on to a, synth a synthetic finisher or pre-finisher or a natural stone. But before we make that decision, let me go ahead and scope my edge to see where we're at. Very nice. All of the 3K scratches are gone. We have a very consistent 8K pattern here. It's very smooth and straight on the edge. I could probably shave with this blade. and have a, a relatively comfortable shave. I mean, it looks that good. Very, very consistent all the way across. And that's why I love the Shapton Stones. They're just really good, consistent performers. You know, they, they have the ability to be very aggressive if you choose to use them that way. Or 
you know, to do some light resurface or refinishing on your edge. You know, they're very versatile stones. Okay, so now my option is this. Do I want to go to a Shapton 12K? And then to a natural stone to give it a very natural smooth feel? Or do I want to choose one of my natural stones? To go ahead and start finishing on. My view is this. I could probably get a nice shaving edge off of one of my natural stones at this point. Probably not going to use the codicle. Probably going to be one of my JNATs. But if I go ahead and do a few laps on the 12K, it's going to make my life that much easier on the, on the uh, JNAT. So what I think I'll do is about 20 passes only, X passes, maybe about 5 half strokes and then about 15 X passes on the 12K, and then go to my JNAT. So that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I like to do, because I feel like it makes my life easier on the natural stone if I just do a few passes with the on the uh, 12K finisher. This 12K Shapton is a little bit different than my other Shaptons. It's the M series Shapton. It's a professional style stone made for you know uh, residential use or hobbyist or what have you, you know, non, non-professional <laughs> high level honing, I guess you would say, I don't know what to call it really, but it's, you know, it's the same professional formulation of stone, but it's half as thick, half as expensive. And it performs the same. Sorry about that. Someone was coming through my house. Unlike the other professional series, this stone does absorb a very small amount of water, and I'm not sure why, because it's the same formulation. Again, I'm just going to resurface the edge of the, the stone's face a little bit, prepare it for some honing. That should be good. On this stone, I like to use a slurry, but I like it to be a more watered down slurry. Simply because this stone does tend to load up quite a bit. All right, so we'll do five I don't know, maybe 10 half strokes on each side, and then we'll move to X's. Very little pressure at this point, guys. Blade weight only. See how fast it is? You can see the Swarth building up already. Alright, there's our 10 half strokes. Now we'll do some cleanup X's. Okay, now I'm going to rinse the swart, the swart and slurry off the stone. Most of it anyway. Because I still don't want my stone loading up on me. Alright. And I'm just going to do some very, very, very light X passes.
All right, I felt the transition to, you know, what I was talking about earlier about how there's a change that happens on the blade, <clears throat> and then it doesn't change again. It just stays the same. I felt that just now with the last couple strokes, and the feel is very consistent, very smooth. I feel it kind of undercutting and suctioning a little bit, but it's gliding very glassy-like across the surface. You can see how fast this stone is. I mean, I've only done some maybe 10, very 20 some very light X strokes and the Swarth is just, I mean, this is a fast stone, guys. All right, that should be good. So now we're gonna move on to our natural finisher. And since we've gone all the way to the 12K, and all right, guys, now that we've reached our finishing stage, I've chosen to use this small J nut. This is a Shobodani Usagi. It's a very hard finishing stone, but it's also very smooth and very fine uh, grained abrasives. Uh, it's pretty consistently um, packed throughout the stone. I've only used this particular stone a handful of times to make a finished shaving edge, and this is a Tomo slurry that's on here. It's starting to dry up now. Um, it's relatively thick. There's not a whole lot of it, but it's relatively thick on there. So I'm going to start out with a fresh slurry, and I'm going to uh, hone with it until it's broken down, and then reduce with water, hone with that until I feel no change again, and uh, reduce again, and eventually end up on clear water. And this is a small stone you can see in relation to the razor, but it's very, very effective. It's a very high quality stone, and it gives really smooth, buttery shaving edges. This one I tend to use by holding in my hand, and um, I'm probably only going to do um, X's and maybe some looping circles on this. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, this is not... Natural stones, you really can't say, oh, you got to do 20 laps or 30 laps, or at least not in my experience. Some people do it um, with a certain level of um, effectiveness, but I, I find that I just go by feel and sight and um, hone until I feel the razor is finished. It's hard to explain, really, but this is what I do. Very smooth surface on the stone. I just got done resurfacing the stone uh, last night. There's almost no audible feedback. That's how smooth and fine it is. Very hard stone. But it gives up real nice hazy Kasumi type finishes. Um, very, very easy. Very light touch on this stone. Even pressure, very light touch, almost no pressure at all, but you got to maintain an even pressure throughout the entire uh, honing session. End up with dull spots or, you know, the heel being honed higher than the toe is or whatever the case. Natural stones, you got to work the slurry. There's really not a whole lot of abrasive content that comes up while honing as far as uh you know the way synthetic stones release fresh abrasives all the time with each pass um natural stones don't tend to do that especially not jnats codicles will codicles will slurry on their own to just be careful not to lose my slurry keep it all on the stone again I'm looking for undercut I'm looking for you know a, a change a sign of something different happening with my edge there's nothing mystical about using natural stones it's really all just learning your stone how does your stone operate understanding the blade that you're honing you know being familiar with it really to be honest with you whenever you hone a new razor you're kind of going into it blind because you don't know how that particular metal will hone or what it responds to not every razor responds to every stone very well but some stones can be universally adequate for any razor it's kind of strange how it works you know you just got to really hone and do it you know, just hone a lot and hone often and 
on different kinds of blades, different types of metal, use different types of hones to really get a firm grasp on, you know, honing, finishing especially. I really feel like anybody can set a bevel and anybody can work through progressions and anybody can finish. It's just a matter of doing it. Nothing mystical about it. On the forums, all the times, I see guys talking you know, as if they're super discouraged or defeated about honing because they're not getting the results they're looking for, but you know, you only will achieve the results that you think you're looking for through doing it often, becoming familiar with honing. Man, this stone is smooth. I feel like I need to uh, dress down my corners a little bit more. Because I've chamfered them slightly, but I don't know. My all my synthetic stones are. I dress the corners down to be rolling instead of being chamfered, and I'm kind of used to it being like that. These uh, J nats, this Shobu and that Ozuku over there, they're so hard. The stones themselves are so dense and hard that it's really quite difficult to to lap them. It takes a long time. So I'm really starting to undercut now. All across the blade, it's just undercutting no problem. I know this stone seems a little small, and I guess it kind of is, but man, it's such a powerhouse. I wonder if you can see that change and how the blade began. When it first started, it was just basically pushing the slurry out of the way. And now it's undercutting and, and uh, the slurry is riding up onto the blade. So I wonder if you can actually see that difference now, how it's translating into the video.
I don't know if I mentioned that this is a Tomo slurry. Um, <clears throat> there's a progression called the uh, uh, Mikawashima progression, which is Nagura progression of Botan, Tenju, Majiro, Koma, then Tomo. If you were using just Nagura progression, but since we went straight through synthetics um, and then ended on a finishing uh, JNAT, then it really was unnecessary to do a Mikawashima progression because you know Botan, Tenju, and Jiro basically are your bevel setter, your mid, mid range, and your pre polish, and then um, Koma would be your you know your kind of a pre polish and then tomo would be your your finish um but we didn't need to do that cuz like i said we did um we did a uh, a synthetic progression up to the finish so really tomo is a is a good place to just finish from there you probably could do coma then tomo but a i don't have coma yet um and b well, I don't have it, so I can't do it. But I think it's unnecessary when you go to a 12K, because I don't really believe that Coma is in the 12K range. I could be wrong about that, but... I can't really assign a grit rating to naturals anyway. I kind of like it when the... When the, uh, when the slurry reaches this thicker state... You know, your water is kind of dissipated. Um, it just feels real silky and smooth and very fine. This Tomo slurry is very, very fine. It's broken down nicely. It feels very silky and smooth. I'm really wanting to cut a Tomo from this stone. From this stone. You can see how thick it is. It's over an inch thick, but... I need to um, contact one of my friends. He's got a tile cutting saw with a diamond blade, and it has, you know, it's a wet saw, so it shoots water out. So you cut real smooth. I mean, if it can cut tile smoothly, like perfectly, you know, it can cut this stone without damaging it. So what I want to do is cut this stone straight down the middle in half and uh, cut some tomos from it use those for my other JNAS. I could probably get three nice tomos out of this stone if I can cut it in half down the middle. Because as it stands right now, if I want to get a tomo slurry from this stone, I have to either use a DMT or an Atoma to generate slurry, which I really don't like doing that. People say it doesn't make a difference, and I've tried it, and I will tell you it does make a difference. It damages the surface of my stone, and my stone no longer performs the way it does when it's perfectly finished. Or, what I do most of the time is I use this stone and generate a slurry on one of my bigger JNATs that's a finisher, and then I just transfer that slurry over. Okay, we are ready to dilute. I'm going to go ahead and try to save as much of this slurry off this blade as I can. by wiping it off. And then I'm going to give it a little spray. Try to further save my slurry. But I don't want to water down my the slurry on my stone too, too much just yet. I'm not ready for that. Just a split second of carelessness and I cut myself with the toe of my blade. Just like that, folks. That's how quickly it can happen. Cautionary tale. Always be aware of your uh, tip. Tip awareness, Jason Rudman would call it. Holy smokes, look at that. It's really bleeding quite... Uh, quite badly. I'll be right back, folks. And we're back. Sorry, guys. I know this video is taking a long time, but 
Anyways, just like that, a split second of, uh, you know, carelessness, man. I just, my fingertip just barely, when I was moving one way, I was moving my blade the other, and my fingertip just barely brushed across the very toe of the blade, sliced it very deeply. So anyways, you can see the color of the, uh, of the slurry here has changed from a very kind of light green. This is a Mizu. Um, Asagi color. It's very kind of, Mizu means uh, water or ocean, and Asagi is actually means yellow, but uh, in reference to JNATS, it's always referring to a green stone for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but the word itself means yellow. Uh, anyways, so now we're at our first reduction, and this blade is ridiculously sharp, very keen, very smooth. Um, I'm just going to check the edge under a scope real quick and see where we're at see if we're getting to where we want to be oh yeah just like that before we even do one reduction i'm already getting a real trademark jnat haziness that's called you know, it's known as Kasumi finish. Everywhere. It's completely obliterated my scratch pattern. I wish I had a microscope that took pictures that I could show you. But just that little bit of work on my stone has completely obliterated the vast majority of the, of the scratch patterns generated by the synthetic stones. I mean, you can still see slight remnants. But, I mean, we are there, man. I, I probably could stop here. But I'm going to go ahead and go through this one other reduction and then maybe go straight to clear water. But I'm going to mix up my slurry on the stone since it's separated from the time I took putting a band-aid on. Um, I love this stone. It's so smooth. And it's, it works so well, so fast. But something I just noticed that I've never noticed before is that when it's wet it has this uh, kind of a stripey pattern here that I've never noticed I don't know what that is from but it could have been a dry spot that's not fully saturated yet anyways I'm gonna continue with my circles and X's I feel like I got a bit too much water on the stone right now but that's okay it'll dissipate I know this video is a little bit long guys but I really wanted to show um, you know how to progress through the ranks so to speak um, to get to your finishing stone because I'm always I'm constantly reading on the forums guys ask questions about you know what do you do after the 1k or how do you know you're done or you know stuff like that do I have to go from 1k to 5 then 8 or can I go straight from 1k to finish or you know, I'm having problems with my codicil because I read so-and-so's post about setting the bevel and then just working the mud. You know, the one whole one stone honing unicorn method. <laughs> I call it the unicorn method because it's a fucking myth, in my opinion. This stone, man, is so smooth, so fine. I tried using it. So what I did was, I've heard a lot about this whole, you know, generating a slurry with DMTs or Tomas or whatever. And so I put it to the test. I, I surfaced my stone, so it was, you know, perfect the way I like it, you know. I, I lapped it, and then I went through the paces of, you know, using abrasives to reduce the scratch pattern went from, what I did was I went from 120 micron DMT to um, a flat plate with 220 grit wet dry sandpaper on it under running water and then 320 and then 400 and that's generally good enough um, and then after that I honed a razor finished on it and I used you know another stone to generate slurry another tomo 
And then after I did that, and I finished the razor, I did a shave with it, and I compared it. Then I took that same razor and killed the edge, honed all the way up to my finish stone, but instead of using a, a Tomo for a slurry stone, I used a DMT. An old worn out uh, 120 micron. Very smooth, very fine. And it completely destroyed the surface of my stone. I, I couldn't I couldn't finish on that stone after having done that. I mean the scratches weren't super deep, but they were very, you know, prevalent pre prevalent. And it just didn't finish my blade very well at all. Like I, I could get a shaving edge off of it, but it was just not it wasn't good. So you know you take that for what it's worth guys there's the whole DMT slurry stone school of thought out there that thinks it's just fine and then there's the traditionalists who say it's not fine you know things about the slurry are different the particles are larger they don't break down the same and I find that all to be true all of it is true and it destroys your stone and wears it out much much faster um, you know take it for what it's worth you know, do your research. Try it. See if it works for you or it doesn't. Don't just listen to what this dude said on Facebook or in the forums or on his YouTube channel just because he's had some success with doing whatever and everybody thinks he's some kind of Honemeister guru fucking stone whisperer now. You know, you see that a lot. A lot of hero worship for honers on the forums and on YouTube and all this stuff and all of a sudden everybody that's a honer now they got a website and they sell stones for ridiculously high prices and are too good to comment on their own stream everybody loves them though I don't know Just use your heads guys find what works for you the only way to do that is by honing I don't feel like I've quite mastered this stone just yet, but someday, I mean I get really good smooth shaving edges off of it, sporadically, I don't always, I'm not always able to achieve a good finish on every razor, so I don't feel like I've mastered this stone at all, uh, but I'll get there, but I can tell you this, that when I do get a really good shaving edge, look at that, the slurry, the undercut's going crazy now. I feel like I'm pretty much good with this part of the progression as far as this reduction. Now some people would say that after a while this slurry will be worn out. And you'd have to rinse it and uh, start with a fresh light slurry. But, I don't know. I mean, if I've worked it this far and it's broken down, how is building a new fresh slurry that has to be broken down, thereby, you know, meaning that it's more abrasive to start with, how is that going to refine my edge? I mean, I'm going from a very fine mud, so to speak, right now, to a less fine mud that has edge dulling properties if you ask me. I think the only thing to do is to further reduce with water and then possibly finish on water. Not all JNATs can be finished on water. Some of them you have to maintain it. You have to keep a real hazy, you know, just a little bit of slurry in that water in order for them to be effective. Otherwise some of them will actually have edge reducing properties from just going straight to water. tell you one thing this stone right here is the only stone I've ever had that I've had other stones get sticky on me but this one this one gets so sticky it's like I can't move the blade and it's starting to get there now I can feel it it's starting to get real sticky now the only thing to do when that happens if you're gonna hone through it 
don't use a lot of pressure. Don't like think you can bear down and push through. Just use that same light pressure, light touch, even lighten it up even a bit more, you know, and get done soon because if you're getting real sticky, it means you're pretty much done. I could probably stop now and have a beautifully smooth shaving edge. Matter of fact, I know I can. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and reduce. Okay. Being mindful of the tip. <laughs> Man, I can't believe I did that. That's the first time I've ever cut myself while honing. And I'm just gonna do a few light X's. I'm gonna knock some of the slurry off. Okay, so now I can see, you can see that change. From changing the slurry to a further reduction, you can see that my blade is no longer undercutting. It's now just pushing it out of the way. So, once, I, once I've done probably maybe a half a dozen passes or so, it'll start to undercut really well. Sometimes doing a couple circles thrown in the mix will get you there a little bit faster. Remember, no pressure. There we go, there's the undercut back. You gotta be careful too, when your stone starts to get real sticky, it has an edge, a tendency to uh, suck the blade down when you're pushing forward and since you're using such light pressure, you can end up lifting your spine off and rolling your edge onto the stone surface, which is no good. You just wasted a lot of time. This stone here is the only stone that I've ever, ever been able to get such a fine, smooth, super keen edge that it passes the HHT with, you know, I'm talking HHT fours and fives with my wife's hair, right? My wife has got wicked, super spider silk fine blonde hair, all right? And anybody that knows anything about HHTs knows that that's not the ideal hair type for, you know, passing HHTs, but this stone is the only one the only stone that I have that will pass the HHT in the 4 and 5 range with my wife's very fine hair. Alright, so now you see the difference? That undercut is just like crazy right now. All over. There's this, the stickiness. I can feel it. It's gradually getting stronger. It might feel to you, some people don't know how to recognize that stickiness when it happens. They may feel like their edge is digging into the stone or that your your blade will start like skidding, like, you know, like, you know, maybe it might even feel a bit bumpy. As the blade's sucking down to the stone surface, what that stickiness is, is that your blade has become so refined that the blade is submitting itself to the surface of the stone and perfectly following the contour of the stone. That's what that stickiness is. Oh well, yeah, we're there, baby. Hope you guys are seeing this the way that the uh, undercut is happening. It's almost like jumping onto my blade. It's like, like the face of my blade has got some type of magnet, and the slurry is metal.
All right, guys. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to finish on clean water uh, because I feel like my blade is there. No, I don't feel like it's going to get any finer than that. Um, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to strop probably 10 laps on linen, maybe 30 or 40 on leather, and that's it. I'll test shave it this evening. There you have it, guys. That's the progression I use. That's the one that seems to work the best for me. So get out there, hone some blades, guys. I'm Straight Razor Revolution, and I'm out of here.